Believe it or not, what you're seeing on screen right now is not a broken controller. This is actually a feature of this very customizable, feature-rich Pogifi ALNS2080 Wireless Pro Controller. Let's take a closer look. Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. This rather interesting controller, the Pogifi ALNS2080 Wireless Pro Controller, was sent to me by Pogifi for review. Just so you know, when I'm sent something to review, I never let the manufacturer who sent it to me view anything to do with the video before it's published, including the video itself or scripts or anything like that. What you get are my uninfluenced, unbiased feelings on the product. Now the Pogifi here has some very interesting features and some unique ones too. But let's cover the basics first. It's designed for use with Nintendo Switch mostly, but it also works just fine on PC, the Steam Deck, and Android. The box is very clean, but high quality and made of stiff plastic, which was a good sign. And inside the box, the controller comes in a hard carry case. This is my favorite thing. If a device comes shipped in a carry case, I automatically feel better about the product. I just love this. There was also an instruction manual in the box, which covers nearly all of the controller's features. It's actually really comprehensive and well-written as well. Opening up the case, we have the controller itself, and four styles of alternative analog stick, and a tool which we'll look at a little bit later. We also get this absurdly long USB cable, it's like three meters long, which I actually think is a great inclusion just in case you need to plug the controller in while you're playing and you're not too close to your Switch or PC. The carry case itself is pretty standard, it's nice and stiff, and just kind of nondescript. As you can see, the Pogifi takes quite a lot of cues from the Xbox style and some of the Nintendo Switch Pro style as well. But it's a little bit more bold in its design, with these deep lines and kind of spaceship-like details. It's all made of a hard, textured plastic. What really sticks out at first glance are the metal analog sticks, which are very shiny. And to me, the big, bold, and colorful face buttons stick out as well. On the back, we have two very nice, smooth metal paddles for M1 and M2 the customizable macro buttons. There's also an on-off switch, but um, it doesn't do anything. I'm not really sure why it's here. The controller still works with the switch off and it still works with it on as well. So I don't know if you know what it does, let me know in the comments, I guess. There's also a setting button for setting the macros and a QR code that you can scan to download the Keylinker app for customization. Also really noticeable, maybe just to me, cause I'm a weirdo, are these really massive screw holes. Anyway, you'll also notice the textured grip, which really helps with the comfort of the controller. I love that this has kind of become a trend these days. The top of the controller is made of a very slick, glossy, and very fingerprinty shiny plastic. It feels fine when you're using the controller, but my goodness, does it pick up fingerprints. It gets so gross and smudgy after basically just one touch. I can only imagine what this would look like after a six-year-old's Fortnite marathon. Ugh. There's also a headphone jack on the bottom, because this controller can wirelessly receive audio, at least from the Switch, and green and only green LEDs. Finally, there's a six-axis gyroscope on board as well for motion controls. And overall, the Pogifi is a nice size and a nice shape. Everything's positioned well, the sticks, D-pad, and very large buttons are all within easy reach. So let's talk about these inputs. The sticks feel very, very nice and are completely customizable, including their tension. On mine, the left stick has some bumps under the rubber though, which is honestly the first of quite a few rough edges on this controller. I love that these sticks are made of metal. They feel incredibly premium and smooth. And I think that the metal base actually helps with this feeling a lot. It's just such a smooth rotation. And there's something about the feeling of slamming these metal rods against the plastic on the side just feels great. The D-pad is kind of like an Xbox bowlish shape, which honestly I've never used before. However, it's a lot slicker than it looks here and is super, super mushy. It almost feels more like a slider than a D-pad. There's no thunk or click, it just kind of moves in each direction. I do like the shape and it's fairly comfortable to use, but I really want a little bit more tactileness from my D-pad. The face buttons, however, are big and bright and really, really nice to push. They have a great amount of travel and a very nice thunk at the bottom. And they stick up from the case plenty when you press them. Shockingly, I might actually like these more than the gully kit buttons, which have custom switches. I'm not too sure yet. The other buttons on the face are simple membrane buttons. There is minus and plus or start and select, a turbo button, a screenshot button, which even works with the Steam Deck, and a vibration adjustment button. They all work well, except for the connection button, which you need to press quite firmly to activate. But I don't know, that's really not a big deal to me at all. 
The LEDs, however, are honestly a little bit disappointing. They're just green, you can't change the colours or customise them or turn them off or anything, and they're kind of dull looking around the analog sticks. On the back, you have these great metal paddles, which are absolutely perfectly positioned under your middle finger, and they're very clicky. They're easy enough to press, but not too soft that you're accidentally going to press them. And if you don't like them at all, you can just slot them out magnetically, which is just a great design. So let's connect this controller to the Switch, since it is technically a Switch controller. And there we go, it's that fast. It works perfectly with the Switch with absolutely no hiccups. It might be the fastest controller connecting to the Switch that I've used so far. And yes, it even wakes the Switch from sleep in literally like three seconds. It is really, really impressive, coming from my Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro which also connects to the Switch, but not as well as this. This game, Tori 2, needs precise controls and the Pojifi works just great. On Nintendo Switch games, everything just works perfectly, there's absolutely no issues with any of the controls, and the gyroscope for motion controls works fine as well. You can connect to a PC or a Steam Deck just as easily through the Bluetooth menu, However, the controls for B and A and X and Y are flipped from the Xbox layout that you might expect from X input, which was really confusing to me at first. You'll either need to adjust to the new style of controls or customize the buttons themselves. Honestly, I kind of expect this to be an automatic change when I connect to a PC, but it's not with the Pojifi, which just means it's a little bit more effort to use it on a PC. You're most likely always going to have to remap something or just live with it and get used to it, which is what I ended up doing. And in use, the Pojifi works perfectly for 3D games that use the analog sticks, triggers, or face buttons. However, I find the D-pad very, very lacking for tight platforming. There's just not enough feedback, and it's a little slick for my taste. I wish I could just distinctly feel each direction, but I just can't. Like I said before, it's kind of just like a slider. Now the key feature of the Pojifi is its customization, and its customization is extensive. Nearly everything can be altered in some way. If you don't want the paddles, take them off. If you don't like the sticks, change them out for different ones. Want to remap the buttons? You can do that too. Starting with software, you'll need an app called Keylinker, which is available on iOS or Android. You can scan the QR code on the back to get an APK if you want to sideload it, or thankfully, you can get it straight from Google Play or the App Store. The app is straight out of 2010, which actually I kind of think this whole controller is, to be honest, and it has a very dated interface but it does work a treat after connecting the controller to your phone with Bluetooth. Nearly everything on this controller is completely customizable. You can remap buttons, you can change the transition curves for the sticks and triggers. Want the triggers to act like a digital switch instead? You can do that here. Want to go full throttle with just a halfway press? You can do that as well. Want L1 to be R1 and R1 to be L1? You can with this app. And it's the same with the analog sticks. Everything is editable in some way, including the dead zones and curves. With the Keylinker app, you can also change the vibration strength, the turbo speed, and create macros with specific millisecond timings. Even the gyroscope sensitivity can be calibrated and edited in here, and every customization that you make is saved to the controller with a single onboard button press, and will remain even after you turn the controller off or connect it to a different device. It's so flexible, it's actually incredible. I've not had one of these pro-style customizable controllers before, and I was really blown away by the flexibility here. And there's hardware customization too, as well as software. The sticks pull off really easily, and they're stuck on with magnets. So you can switch these out whenever and however you want, and they literally just clip into place. It's, I don't know why, maybe I'm an old man, but this just blows me away. Unfortunately though, the sticks included in the case are almost absurdly bad quality. Look at the rough edge on this one. Still, they actually use an Xbox Elite controller style connection, so you can actually go and buy the official Xbox Elite sticks if you want to, and use those instead. In addition, you can use the included tool to adjust the stick tension. So if you turn the screw all the way to the left, the stick is super loose and light, and kind of twitchy. But if you screw it all the way to the right, it's very heavy and stiff. I love this feature. You can also adjust the vibration and use turbo without needing the app. And you can record and save your macros to the paddles right here on the controller if you want to as well. And best of all, all of these features are documented really well in the included manual. Oh yeah, of course I need to talk about the weird stick thing from the beginning of the video. It's kind of a funny story. I've been playing Sonic Frontiers, and in that game you end up running around in very tight circles a lot of the time. And while I was playing, the left stick just stuck in place. It just stuck there and it wouldn't return to center. 
And I was really honestly quite sad about this. And I contacted the company and I said, hey, while I've been testing this for my review, it broke. Um, you know, what do you want me to do in terms of returns and stuff? And one of the engineers reached out to me and said, and these are my interpretations of their words, no dummy, this is a feature. And what you do is that you can twist the stick to the left and it will screw tightly into position and the stick will then remain in the direction that it's currently in. So this is like useful for say you want to walk straight forward for a long distance in Skyrim or something, or you want to run in circles in a game to get steps or experience points or something, and then you can twist it back to the right to unstick it and return it to usual. It's an utterly bizarre feature, and I love that I actually thought this was broken. It's the ultimate, that's not a bug, it's a feature moment. But I actually really like this, it's kind of a unique feature, and I think there are actually some genuine use cases for this as well. Especially when I, as a reviewer, am testing a device. If I have the Pogifi connected, I can actually have the stick stuck in this direction without the need for elastic bands or anything, which will keep a character or camera moving on screen so the device won't go to sleep and I can test things like battery life. I actually really, really like this feature. And I have to say that the Pogifi support team were extremely communicative and really, really nice to work with. Throughout my testing, I emailed them constantly to ask different questions and get more information, and they were always very generous and gracious even when I was being a complete dummy. So, the Pogifi is a very competent controller, but it's not all great. And that's because, in all honesty, I'm not 100% sure on the overall quality of this controller. Firstly, the caps included in the case are just terrible. They have many imperfections and have worn down substantially in the time that I've been testing it in the last few weeks. And then the plastic that the controller is made of. It's just not that nice, it just doesn't feel particularly quality, it feels quite cheap in my hands. And in addition, the feeling of L1 and R1 are different from each other, and they have a different sound when you press them. The left is very solid, but the right is very hollow and light. This lack of symmetry is a huge pet peeve of mine, I cannot stand it. And it just kind of gives me a slight perception of poor quality, even though I'm not necessarily sure it's indicative of that. Also, with the kind of dull LEDs and the slick, honestly gross glossy plastic at the top, it's just not that nice. When you compare this to something like the Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro, it is clearly just not as good quality. The Gully Kit is just so well designed, and there's really not any element that isn't put together perfectly. Of course, you also get the excellent hole triggers and sticks as well. It's almost like with no context at all, the Pogifi is really, really nice, and you'll probably enjoy it and use it a lot. But you put it next to a gully kit or maybe an 8-bit do, and the rough edges really start to show. However, I say all of that, but I've had no major quality issues at all with this controller in the few weeks I've been using it. So really, this is all just kind of anecdotal. I don't really have any facts other than the sticks. The analog sticks are really the only thing that stick out as being incredibly poor quality. Everything else, maybe it just doesn't quite feel as nice as the other controllers I have, but I've had no actual issues with it. Alright, so let's wrap up this review with my likes and dislikes of the Pogifi AL NS2080 Pro Controller. I like the overall comfort in the hands. It feels very, very nice to use. I really like the nice and chunky face buttons. I don't think they're any bigger than the Gully Kit, but they just feel really nice to push on. This controller is hugely customizable and has some quirky features too, and I really love that. The support I've received from Pogifi while I've been using this controller. They're very quick to reply, very kind, and very helpful. And that does go a long way for a good customer experience. And finally, the Switch connection is excellent. It works perfectly, it wakes the Switch from sleep, it connects in about a second or two. Really, really good. Now for my dislikes. The overall quality is not quite there for me. The D-pad is mushy and not tactile enough, and strangely has no customization in terms of its shape. Since this controller takes a lot from the Xbox Elite, I thought that maybe they would have some D-pad customization, but there is none. And of course, the included analog sticks are really, really poor quality. Shockingly poor, actually. Overall, I would definitely still recommend the Pogifi Pro Controller for anybody who wants a cheap, customizable controller with a ton of features that you can really make your own. It really serves its purpose well, despite a handful of rough edges. And in the end, I've had absolutely no game-breaking issues with it whatsoever. I've played Sonic Frontiers from start to finish with this controller over about 30 hours, and I've really enjoyed my time with it. And I've even made little adjustments to it, like the analog stick tension, in that time. And this customization really is worth having in the end. The Pogifi Switch Pro controller is available from their website, pogifi.com, for $59.99 US dollars. 
plus shipping and taxes. If you want to check it out for yourself, I've left a link in the description box below. And you can also use the coupon code RETROBREEZE if you want to get 10% off. And that's it for this one. Have you had this controller or any other that you really, really like? Let me know what your favorite controller is in the comment box below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe because I have much more interesting content for you coming up very soon. Big thanks to Pojifi for sending me this controller and being very great with their support while I've been testing it. And thank you for watching this video. This has been Shem from RetroBreeze and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.